Mental health continues to be an area of emphasis for African-Americans nationwide and really for people throughout the world as we deal with the ongoing coronavirus pandemic, racial tension in the United States and so many other issues. Here to talk with us today is Taylor Marshall. She is a senior at North Carolina a State University and also the founder of Not Just a Smile, a social media campaign and account that's dedicated to providing positive imagery of mental health care and mental uh, mental health uh, sustainability for people at the collegiate level and beyond. So, Ms. Marshall, we appreciate you coming on this morning. Tell us about Not Just a Smile and how it came that you, you found this to be something that was important for people to hear, uh, particularly in spaces on social media where they're normally interacting with each other and, and, and interacting with content. Okay, so I think about my sophomore to junior year of high school, I started feeling like um, that I was battling with something, but I wasn't for certain what it was. And I had told my second older sister that I had felt like that I might be suffering with some with some depression and some anxiety. And eventually it came up to my parents. Um, and of course, you know, not having a lot of knowledge on mental health, their first questions were, well, you know, like, how do you have depression if you have a home, um, if we have financial stability, if you have food and clothes in your body? That was their first thought because they felt like, well, mental health can't be an issue if you have the basic needs in life. Um, and shortly after that, um, after a little bit of talking and just really trying to get them to understand, I started going to therapy. Um, and at that point, my first therapist, she was a white woman. Um, and personally, after a while, I didn't really like going to therapy with her, I know like everybody is different when it comes to them choosing their therapist. But for me personally, I felt like there's a level that she couldn't really um, understand me on because there is a disparity between um, being a black woman and being a white woman, like it's a pretty big difference. And I always felt like there was a level that she couldn't really um, empathize on. Mm -hmm. Um, and so around that time too, like I felt like, like as um, I mean, as I got to college, like my freshman year, um, I had like a really um, bad, like a bad time battling my depression. Um, my freshman year, I was running track at Virginia Union um, on scholarship. And while I was there, um, I had a few like issues. Like I had got a really bad concussion because I had an allergic reaction to mold. I got dizzy, I hit my head. I had been out for a lot of the season. And then after that, like, because I wasn't running, I was gaining weight and I was just kind of getting like really, really sad. And I just didn't like the school. Um, but like in that time too, like in really like understanding that and deciding to transfer to North Carolina a and um, that made me like feel a little bit better knowing that I could get out of there. But I soon came like to really understand that even though like I have this battle with depression and anxiety, it's not just my battle alone. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, that's when I said that, you know, I wanted to try to start something, but it took me a really long time to really figure it, figure it out, like what I wanted to do. I put it off for so long. Like, um, once, cause once I transferred to a and um, I crossed, um, to the game shop, the seminar was sort of incorporated, like just that quick. And then I was the vice president mm -hmm. and then I got elected president and it's just like, and I was just doing all of these like clubs on campus. I was, um, in the slam poetry clubs, um, and I was in couture, like I was just doing a lot of different things and I wasn't really um, necessarily taking a stop and doing a lot of things that I really wanted to do. But, you know, with the pandemic, um, there was a lot of free time. And I said, well, you know what, maybe it's time for me to actually uh, do something for me more. And that's what, that was my New Year's resolution. I said that I was going to start doing things for me. Because I feel like a lot of times, like especially with my roles and my clubs, um, a lot of times I was always like worried about other people and I was making sure everything else was OK, but never just like really like focusing on my heart or, or really um, focusing on the fact that I really wanted to start this brand. And this was the perfect time to do. It. Well, so, let, well, let's talk about that, So, because at the same time where you're, you're coming into your own about taking care of your, your own mental health mm -hmm. and you're doing so many other things that that. that did those extracurricular activities that sports ever create even a temporary, you know, kind of valve loosening or a way to, 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 to get away from that? How, how did those things help you? But then you inevitably came back to say, well, there's something more that I can do for myself and for others. Yeah, um, absolutely. No, it definitely did help. And I realized um, I realized that um, once I stopped running track, because I had been running track since I was 
I don't know, in the fifth grade. So I had been doing it for a long time. So I had always been very busy. Like track is a very busy sport. I mean, as is any sport, like it keeps you very occupied. And as soon as I stopped, as soon as I transferred to a and and I stopped running, I found myself in like four different clubs. And yeah, it definitely did help to take my mind off of it, but also it wasn't the healthiest thing to do. Like putting yourself in all of these different, these different activities and never breathing and always focusing on work and everybody else, like it makes it hard for you to really take the time to say, hmm, well, am I just doing this so I don't have to think about my own problem? I was so focused on making sure every other problem was okay, like everybody else's problems and these orgs and checking on other people and making sure they were good that I wasn't focusing on myself because I didn't want to. You know, it was easier to kind of just like put it off um, than to deal with it head first. Take us back to the to the first post you ever made on Not Just a Smile. Mm-hmm. And you created the account, the first mm-hmm. post you put up. What was the the feeling associated with that? Because you're somebody who would, you know, participated in and taken advantage of therapy, mm-hmm. you think that it would be the kind of content that would encourage others to consider therapy or mental health care? Um, yeah, that that first per- post definitely, um, there was a lot of different feelings when I made that post. I know that I was just like, I was definitely really um, excited um, for, for something. I wasn't sure where it was going to take me. I wasn't sure um, exactly how I was going to do what I wanted to do, but I knew that this is what it was. I always knew that I wanted to start an interview series. I didn't really know what exactly that looked like. Um, I knew that I wanted to be able to reach out to people so they knew that they weren't alone. And I wanted to educate people, but I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do that. And like shortly, um, I had my, my best friends at school. Um, I asked them, you know, like, would you all want to be a part of my team. And so but since then, um, I have had you know, my, my, my closest friends working alongside me. I've had um, my friend Jasmine, who helps me with really getting the interview questions together. I have my friends DJ and Sway, who manned the cameras and mm-hmm. helped with editing. Um, I have my best friend Nas, who really helps me finding the people for these interviews for the most part. And it, and it works really well. Like They were my, my friends before this, so it all just flows. But they really helped me kind of realize what exactly it is that I want to do with this brand. And because you are a, a, a psychology major, do you feel like this is enhancing the opportunities that you'll have post graduation from A&T, trying to get into graduate school, pursuing a career in psychology? Yeah, I've definitely been putting this in my grad school uh, statements. I've definitely been talking about it. It's on my CV um, just because I know for me personally, one thing that I've always found is my interest is the way that childhood um, relationships affect us in adulthood. In adulthood. And I, I've realized in my interviews with people, like I'm really seeing how a lot of people's childhood experiences are affecting them now in college. So that only speaks to say like what's going to happen when we get older from college and how that that comes in forming like more relationships and like maybe starting families and in the workplace like it's definitely really interesting and I do think that it's going to help a lot. In the end, um, not that there will be an end to your initiative because obviously you got a, a team around you. It's having a positive impact. Um, what do you hope on a daily or a weekly or a monthly basis? Or what, what are the things that let you know that it's working, that it's worthwhile and it's having an impact on your friend group, your, you know, the Aggie network, HBCU network? How do you know that it's working and what kind of fulfillment do you get from that? Um, I think the first was the first real content that I was really putting on the page were the affirmations. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I've revamped them, like the affirmations that are up on the page now and the way that I post them now weekly don't look the same as they did before. Um, but, you know, when I was posting, when I first started posting them, I noticed like a lot of my friends at first, the following was really just my friends, and, you know, my friends were reposting them. And then, you know, but I kept, you know, I kept it up and more and more people kept seeing them and I would like check the insights and I would see that more people are like actually bookmarking them mm-hmm. and seeing them. And I remember maybe, um, maybe a month and a half ago, I have, um, a friend who does artwork and I guess somebody, somebody paid for a commission piece for her and they asked. And they asked her if she could use some of the affirmations from the Not Just a Smile page in her painting. And so she was 
one texted me and she asked me if that was okay. And of course I said, I said yes. And like that, that right there, like let me know that the affirmations really do mean something to people. Or like the way that the, the interviews have been going. The first interview um, was really like a test run. It was, I was interviewing Nas, my friend Nazir. Um, that was the first interview um, just because we needed, you know, we needed to see like how it was really going to work and what we were going to really do from it. And every single interview I had felt like, you know, it was getting better. Um, like episode, first we got, once we got to episode three, I was like, okay, you know, I really understand like what's happening. And it was really, it was a really like vulnerable interview. And then we got to episode four and that one was even more vulnerable. Like we're there, um, and there were tears and it was it was very it was very honest and I felt like that was the most honest interview that we had and I got a lot of people just saying you know saying back to me like you know I really liked the interview I really enjoyed it or the last one that I had posted that I recorded and edited myself with um the debunking myths on mental health like I felt like a lot of people were saying that the content like it was quality content but they were really like learning a lot and I've started like getting more um older people like you know like 40s 50s like that are following the page who are really seeing like seeing me interviewing younger people so they like they really know like it's like it's really it's really happening um and because I, I know like sometimes um you know mental health hasn't always been talked about um amongst african-american communities mm -hmm. so i think it's nice it's nice for them to be able to see it or i got a text message when i had first started making hoodies from a friend who said that every time that she was sad she was going to put the hoodie on and that that's what like that's what I wanted. That's what like the hoodies are not the most important thing to me, but it is something that I did just just because mm -hmm. the affirmations on the seat that say I am light, I'm love and I'm whole. And just seeing that when I put the hoodie on for myself, I know that that does something for me and hoodies themselves are, are comforting. So that helps me. And it was nice to see that, you know, it's helping other people, too. It's definitely a movement It's definitely much needed. And we appreciate that a sister uh, at an HBCU is at the forefront of something that can have a positive impact. Uh, for black folks, uh, not just on IG or on social media or on the internet, uh, but in their daily lives. So remind us again, where can we find you on IG? How can we follow you and how can we support you? Okay, so the the page on Instagram is at not just a smile. On that page, I post affirmations, I post tips, I post interview series on IGTV. Um, however, also, if you look in the bio, there's a link tree on the page and not just a smile that takes you to the YouTube page. It has resources in it, um, like really, there's some really good things in there. Like there's a self-care game called um, You Feel Like Shit and it basically walks you through your day, um, you know, to, to make sure that you've done everything, every basic need for you. Like there's just a lot of different resources in there for that. Um, and also too, in that link tree is the website for Not Just a Smile, which is notjustasmile.com. Um, it's very like it's very simple in that like the name is always the same across every platform. So not just a smile.com on that page, it'll take you directly to the Instagram, it'll take you directly to the YouTube, and then there's there's merch on there. Like the hoodies, like I have this one that's in light blue, and just because like I know people can't really see it because I'm sitting down. So like these are what the hoodies look like um, on the back. It has just the regular the logo, which is a cracked smiley face on the back of the hoodie. Um, with the affirmations on the sleeve that read, I am light, I am love, I am whole. And then the hood, the hood printing on it as well. And those are actually on the website, um, as well as stickers that have that smiley face logo too. And right now everything is 40% off um, with the code, 40 in all caps. Like those are just different ways too. I mean, I love if people can buy hoodies, but my main thing is that you're really going onto the page and you're looking at the interview series because that's the most important thing right now. Push the merch, sis. Mr. Mm -hmm. Burst, thank you so much for your time today.